This screencast video lecture explains about the sulfur assimilation. Before going into the topic, we try to understand what is sulfur cyclic. It is the cyclic movement of sulfur between the living organism and the environment. This cycle is also referred as a sedimentary cycle since some of the components or steps of the cycle may function there in the sediments of the water bodies. Sulfur cycle in the soil is mainly mediated by the microorganism. The sulfur transformation involved the following steps. Immobilization and mineralization reaction, oxidation and reduction reactions, volatilization reaction. Here, the immobilization is the point of concern with reference to our subject. Since immobilization refers to assimilation of sulfur inside the cell. This can also be regarded as the biochemistry of sulfate reduction. In nature, two types of sulfate reduction could be happening. One is a assimilative sulfate reduction which we are going to see in detail later and another one is a dissimilative sulfate reduction. If you look at here, sulfate is converted into some other intermediate compound and finally the sulfur is assimilated inside the cell through certain organic sulfur compounds such as a cysteine and methionine that is referred as a assimilative sulfate reduction. Whereas sometimes the sulphate is converted into certain intermediary compounds and finally the hydrogen sulphate will be excreted out of the cells and they will be reaching into the environment which is technically referred as a dissimilative sulphate reduction. Now we look at the points related to assimilative sulphate reduction. In total it refers to sulphate that have been present in the inorganic form outside the cell is converted into sulphate of an organic form. That is, it can be made into certain amino acids and it is present inside the cell. Now, we look at the steps that are involved in the assimilatory sulphate reduction. Microbial assimilation and conversion of inorganic sulphate into organic sulphur is through assimilatory sulphate reduction pathway. It leads to a temporary immobilization of sulphur. This process involves enzymes such as ATP sulfurylase and two energy rich sulphate nucleotides that are referred as a APS adenosine 5 phosphosulfate and PAPS 3 phosphoadenosine 5 phosphosulfate. The overall reaction of this pathway is to incorporate the sulphur into amino acids. Microbes generally assimilate sulphur in the form of amino acids in protein. However, they can also able to assimilate sulphate esters, sulfonates, vitamins and cofactors. Some microbes such as fungi can accumulate large molecules of sulfur such as sulfate esters. Now, we look at the pathway of the assimilatory sulfate reduction. ATP in the presence of sulfate with the help of enzyme ATP sulfurylase is converted into APS and inorganic phosphate. APS stands for adenosine 5 phosphosulfate. Further, again a molecule of ATP addition in the presence of APS phosphokinase enzyme, it is converted into Phosphoadenosine 5 phosphosulfate. In the next step, phosphoadenosine 5 phosphosulfate is reduced with the help of the reducing equivalent that is NADH and the enzyme PAPS reductase. It is converted into sulfite and phosphoadenosine phosphate. Find the final step, sulfite is getting reduced there into hydrogen sulfide with the help of an enzyme sulfite reductase. So, that is an important enzyme. It is involved in the conversion of sulphide to hydrogen sulphide which is a highly reduced form. This reduced sulphur can be incorporated there into some special kind of amino acids such as acetyl l serine with the help of a sulfa hydrolase enzyme results in the formation of cysteine. So, cysteine is an amino acid which can be used for making up the proteins.